Hello everyone and welcome to Miss Sharon's Reading Corner. I am Miss Sharon and today we have a special story. This special story is about a little girl working at a store. It's called We Keep a Store and the author name is Annie Shelby and the pictures were done by a man named John Ward and these pictures were paintings. So you know we always say an illustrator and they draw the pictures. Well Mr. John Ward he did painting. He painted the pictures. So our person who name is Annie, this is Annie right here and her name is Annie Shelby and Annie Shelby, first of all her name is Annie and that's my mom's name. And second of all, remember I told you I was born and raised in a state called Kentucky? Well, I was born and raised in a little town that was way down here. It was called Hickman. And it was so tiny that it didn't make the map. And then, you know, Miss Annie lived later in life in a place called Lexington, Kentucky. Now, it's pretty far from Hickman, Kentucky. But all the same, it still was in the state of Kentucky. So first... Her, mom, her name was Annie, and my mom's name was Annie, and she was from Kentucky, and I am from Kentucky. And so that's what's similar in this book. Well, this story that says we keep a store, guess where the store is? It's in our front yard. Ooh, do any of you have a store in your front yard? Your auntie works at a store, Sasha? What's your auntie's name? Sonia? What store does she work at? She works at Kroger's? Oh, wow, I love going to Kroger's. I get my fruits and vegetables there. I buy all my groceries at Kroger's. Um, but in our story, it doesn't say the name of the store, but I'm pretty sure it's named after their family since it's in their front yard. So that's a good correlation, Sasha. Uh, I'm talking about your auntie works at Kroger's, which is a store. And then this little girl works in the store that is their family's in their front yard. So look at that. It's a little country store in their front yard. So there's the steps to go up to their house. Okay. We keep a store. It sits right in our front yard. So whenever we need anything, all we have to do is walk across the yard to the store and get it. Wow, that sounds fun and easy to do. We don't even have to pay ourselves for it. That's one good thing about keeping a store. In a corner behind the counter, there is a cardboard box. When a customer wants candy, my mom scoops a scoop into the box and comes up with gum drops and lemon drops and cream. She slides the candy into a paper sack and weighs it on the big white scale. Sometimes she has to take a little out or put a few more pieces in. Ooh, I would love to put a few more pieces in. When I was a little girl back in Hickman, we used to go to a little corner store and the guy who owned the store, he used to do the candy just like that. He would put it in a brown paper, he would scoop it and put it in a little brown paper bag. When she isn't looking, I can eat a piece of candy right out of the box. That's another good thing about keeping a store. My mother figures out what to order from a big grocery company. When the truck comes, my father slits the box open with his knife. I help stack cans on shelves. So you see her back there? She's helping stack the cans. She's doing it very carefully, putting it up there very straight and neat. And her dad is opening the box because little people don't use knives and they don't open boxes. So we have to let our big people open the boxes. You think your auntie opens them? She does. She probably does. We all wait on customers and put money in the cash register and count out change. We work together. That's another good thing about keeping a store. So she's learning from her parents 
how to take money, how to give money back, and how much everything costs in the store. But our customers don't come just to buy things, they come to visit too. In winter, in the winter, the men circle their chairs around the stove and tell long stories about the good old days when wolves and bears and foxes roamed the country. Sometimes they tease me. You ought to get married, they say. Leroy here would make you a good husband. Leroy stares at his shoes. My face turns red like the coal in the fire. Like the coal in the stove. See, can you see that stove? That's an old kind of stove you put the wood and coal in, and so it keeps you warm. In the summer, they move their chairs outside and wither till curls of cedar shades piles up around their shoes. See all the little pieces of wood chips as they cutting it. The women sit with my mother under the apple tree in the yard. They help her string green beans to can or cut apples up to dry. Wow. We used to do the green beans. We used to have to um, help our mom do green beans. We would cap them or we would have to string them, which meaning open them up and get some of the beans out. Their children played with me in the fields beside the store. We played kick the can or hide and go seek, or sometimes we just make up like chase that chicken or see who's the first to fall into the creek. Ooh, the creek is a little thing of water. Finally, toward dark, a grown-up hollers for the children to come on. It's time to go. Come on, it's time to go home. You all come back, my father would tell them, and they answer, we'll be back. As they driving away, they waving goodbye that they will be back. That means, they mean it too. That's the best thing about keeping a store. So that's our story today. We keep a store. So when she's in her store, what did she say they had in the store? They had candy. You are right, Brianna. They had candy. Where was the candy? <gasps> Leo said in a cardboard box behind the counter. Oh, that's a lot of remembering, Leo. Not Ailey. Oh, what do they put the candy in? A little brown bag. They put the candy in, and the bag is about that big. And it is so good. Um, What do you remember, Roman? You remember that the men sit around the stove and told stories. What did they tell stories about, Twyla? They talked about bears. Whoa, yes, they did. They talked about the good old days. And what did they say to me? What did they say to the little girl? <gasps> that Leroy need to be her husband, that she need to get married. <laughs> but she was so young, little kids don't get married. Um, so she has to wait till she become a grown up. Um, what else happened in our story? The children would play, and they would play all kinds of games. Yes, they did. So, what did the women do? <gasps> they did green beans, and what did they do with the apples? Jamari said they cut them and to make lay them to dry. Yes so that you can eat them later, because sometimes you can dry them out and then you can eat them later. Well, today I also brought something that might help us remember some of the things in the story. So when um, they are working in the store, what do they have to do with the money? They have to count money, and sometimes they have to count the items. So if you see on here, I have different color bowls. But what we're going to do, we're going to match the animals to the color bowl. And so in each one of them, I have an animal already. 
So this is a green pig. So what colors would we put in this bowl? <gasps> All green. So I'm going to see how many green ones do we have. We have a green cow. We have a green lamb. We have a green rooster. And this makes four. And the horse makes what? Five, Josiah says. You're right, Josiah. Okay, so the next one we're going to take is red. We have a red horse. We're going to count these other items that we're going to put in here and see how many we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Wow. So we have five green ones, five red ones. Let's see how many yellow ones we have. We have one yellow horse, two. <gasps> this makes three. And that's all the yellow we have. So we only have three yellow items and five red and five green. This color is what? Orange, 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 orange. It's an orange pig. Oink, 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 oink. Let's see how many more orange ones we have. This makes two, three, four, five. We have five orange ones. So we have five. Five, three, five. Purple. Who knows what colors make purple when you mix them together? <gasps> Roman said red and blue. You are so correct, Roman. So we have one in here already. Two, three. Four, five, five, three, five, four. The blue bow is the last bow. We have one inside. Oh, sheep. Two, three, four. So we have several that have five and only one that has three. Who can tell me which one has three? Caden says the yellow one only has three. Let's see. One, two, three. Now we have one more bowl that doesn't quite have five. Who remembers which one only has four? Brittany, you remember? Which one was it? <gasps> the purple one. You are right. Let's count and see. One, two, three. The purple one has four, and the yellow one has three. So now we have four bowls left, and all four of these bowls have five. We call this color hmm, green and blue, red, and orange. Knows what color makes orange? Well, yellow and red makes orange. Yes, yellow and red makes orange. So 
this is the end of our story and our game. I want to thank you for visiting us today, and I wish you well. I am Miss Sharon, and I am so excited that you spent this day with me, and I will look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. I wish you well, my friends, and have a good day.